Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be exploring various stars of various sizes, and we're going to compare the biggest and the smallest well-known stars in Universe Sandbox Square. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. And so, let's actually start our adventure by leaving the solar system and our beautiful sun. And we're going to create a new simulation here and start with the smallest star we've discovered so far. This is basically the limit of how small the stars can get. And it's very likely that we're not going to be able to find anything smaller than this. And it's a super cool dwarf, as in super cold dwarf, by the name 2 mass J0523-1403. Unfortunately, does not have a cooler name than that, hasn't really been invented just yet, but maybe one day we'll name it something really interesting. Next one we're going to put here is going to be another red dwarf, discovered in uh, 2016, that has seven really interesting Earth-like planets orbiting around it, and this is the infamous Trappist-1. They're relatively similar in size, they're not very far off from each other. And now we're going to place the closest red dwarf to us, and actually the closest star to us to begin with, Proxima Centauri. So as you can see, all three of them are relatively similar in size. Ironically, or interestingly, if I place Jupiter next to them, it's going to be about the same size. So these are not far off from Jupiter. And they're even smaller than the largest planet we've discovered by the name of HD 100546 b So this is the infamous poofy gas giant. Very, very low density. And because of that, it has a very large size. We're actually going to place it just right here so you can compare it to the sizes of other objects later on. Now, let's put our sun here just for a comparison. And you'll notice how our sun is actually much larger than these stars. This is our sun. And if you want to look, compare Earth to all of this, this is what Earth looks like. So there is little Earth in comparison to all of them. We're going to place it maybe right here at the end. So there's a tiny, tiny, tiny Earth that's been burned and uh, basically melted by the heat from these stars. All right, moving on. Let's go with another really interesting neighbor of ours, Sirius A. There's actually two Sirius stars. Sirius B is the closest white dwarf to us. This is essentially the dead star. That's what our sun will become one day. It's going to become a, red, uh, a white dwarf as well. Uh, but we're actually interested in Sirius A which is what this star looks like. We're going to place it right here. This is the size comparison. And um, so it's getting larger and larger at this point. Next is going to be Pollux. Now Pollux is going to be dramatically larger. As you can see, we've suddenly jumped and increased in size quite a lot. And what's interesting is that we've actually discovered that it has a planet orbiting around it, about 2.3 masses of Jupiter. And this is a planet known as Pollux b. There it is in comparison to uh, some of the other objects. It's actually very, very, very small. But obviously larger than Earth, which is right there, but not as big as Jupiter. And so now we're, we're getting into really, really large objects. After Pollux, we're going to place the next uh, star that's going to be even larger. This is actually a star that was briefly mentioned in the 2017 movie known as Passengers, a science fiction movie about two travelers going to a different star in, um, in a system far, far away. And there they pass by a star known as Arcturus, and they actually use Arcturus as a kind of a slingshot maneuver target. So just a little bit bigger than, than Pollux, as you can see. Not by much, but just a little bit. And at this point, we're getting into very, very, very large sort of sizes. Now, this is already really, really big. But it gets bigger even, even, even more than this. I'm going to place the next star known as Aldebaran. And this star is also very famous. But to me, it's actually really interesting because... This is essentially where um, one day, specifically in about 2 million years... The uh, probe by the name of Pioneer 10, which left Earth many decades ago, is going to actually pass by. So, two million years later, it's going to possibly enter the system. So, you know, get your popcorn ready. No, I'm sure by then we'll probably be gone. So, okay, let's move on. Next is going to be Rigel. Now, Rigel is actually not one star, it's possibly three or even five stars. But um, 
it's very very powerful it's very very bright super super powerful so bright as a matter of fact that it's responsible for lighting up several nebula around it including the infamous witch's head nebula so this is a very bright star by the name of rigel it's about 21 times um in terms of mass of sun and in comparison to our sun if i were to basically place our sun next to it our sun is super 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 small you can kind of see it maybe from this angle a little bit better so it's basically about the same difference as the difference between the sun and earth in terms of size all right so that's not the end yet we're going to go to the next star by the name of Antares. Now, this is another really, really popular star and much, much larger than everything else we've seen so far. Um, Antares, you may have heard this name actually, if you've played um, Master of Orion, there's, uh, I believe it's called Master of Orion Battle for Antares. That's essentially the star in that region and it's going to actually go supernova in several hundred thousand years. It's possibly going to be one of the first supernova in the next uh, few million years. And it's going to be, when it goes supernova, it's going to be as bright as the moon in our sky. And it does have a companion star, so it's very likely that this star is going to become uh, possibly a neutron star. And it's then going to do all kinds of things to its companion star, including possibly creating some sort of a super powerful pulsar. Alright, so Antares is here. That's Rigel. Rigel, is, if you remember, was much, much bigger than our, uh, our own star, Sun. And this is Antares, which is even larger than everything we've seen. We're not done. We're going to the next famous star, Betelgeuse. Now, Betelgeuse is um, something that originated in the Orion's Belt. It's just a little bit bigger than Antares. And uh, this is probably one of the most visible stars in our sky. It's a very bright orange star, or I guess more reddish orange. And um, it will also go supernova in about a million years and will probably become a neutron star just like Antares. And this is actually one of the most studied stars in our galaxy. We know a lot about Betelgeuse, it's been studied very thoroughly, and we understand it very, very well. But we don't really know its exact size, because it doesn't seem to have a companion, so it's very difficult to measure its mass, and its very precise size. Now we're going to go for the giants. The first one we're going to mention is the star that was the biggest star we knew about, for about, uh, I don't know, a few decades. This is V.Y. Canis Majoris, slightly bigger than Betelgeuse. Its size uh, goes beyond our understanding of stellar evolution, and we don't really know what type of a star it is, because it's very hard to define. We're not sure if it's a red supergiant, or if it's, if it's a bright red hypergiant. We're not sure about the size either, but we know it's much bigger than these other stars. And the last one, and the biggest star ever, is going to be UYS Qtai. This is actually a star that we discovered back in 1860, but we didn't measure it until about 2012. So we've confirmed its gigantic size only in 2012. Um, and we think that it's possibly a red hypergiant, but once again, we're not sure because first of all, it's far away. And second of all, it's very hard to precisely point out its size, but we know that it's bigger than this one. It's bigger than Canis Majoris. But we do know that this star is one of the most luminous in the sky and it's something like 340,000 times brighter than our tiny, 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 tiny star sun that I'm going to show you right next to that one. So it's actually kind of almost impossible to see. This is how tiny our sun is. And let's actually go into the comparison mode and go through all of these objects starting with a beautiful but steaming planet Earth. So this used to be Earth before it basically kind of got scorched by all of these stars. But if I change this to zero degrees, I guess I can't. I can't change it to zero degrees because it's too hot here. So there's Earth. That's uh, two mass J0523, 1403, the smallest star we've discovered, just a little bit smaller than Jupiter. We have Trappist, then we have Proxima Centauri, then we have the giant planet known as HD 100 um, 546b, and then we have our sun. Now, let's go into other stars. We have Sirius. Zoom out a little bit and you get Pollux. Zoom out a little bit more and you get Arcturus, Aldebaran, and there is those stars just so you can see them in comparison. Uh, Rigel, and now we have to start zooming out even more because now we reach the Hyper and Supergiants. Antares, Betelgeuse, 
Canis Majoris and UI, UI Skutai. So in comparison to our sun, this is a tremendously large object. As a matter of fact, it's uh, something like 2000 times bigger than the sun just by radius alone. So it would actually cover most of our solar system if we were to place it there. Now, there's another star that's interesting, but it's actually not in our galaxy, but I'm going to place it here anyway. It's a star by the name of R136A, and it's actually going to be much smaller than these stars, but it is going to be the most massive star that we'll have here. It's something like 350 masses of the sun, even though it's a lot smaller than some of these hypergiants. And this star is actually in a galaxy known as a Large Magellanic Cloud, and is responsible for creating the largest nebula known to us, known as the Tarantula Nebula. And this star we'll talk about in a little bit more detail later, and I've already talked about it previously as well, but this is actually a star that's also very, very interesting. But, once again, it's not in our galaxy, so we're not going to focus on it just yet. But basically, this is what the size comparison looks like for all of these stars. And before we finish this video, you may have noticed that I actually disabled the gravity mode. So all these stars are just kind of staying there. So let's just actually go in here and re-enable the gravity. We're going to change the gravity back to one to what it was before, pause the game, and then see what happens. Can you take a guess? And anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe possibly share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, science videos, and wants to learn through video games as well, and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. And let's do this. Let's go in here, unpause our game, and let the havoc begin. Anyway, come back here tomorrow to learn something else, something really interesting that you may have not known before. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And here come the supernova that is incredible look at these beautiful supernova as these stars start to collide with one another let's actually zoom out and observe the beauty from from afar this is a lot of really beautiful color